Hello, thank you for doing this. Ah, thank you. For, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. My name's Becca, and okay. um, I'm the executive director here at the Writers League of Texas, and I do okay. a lot of our conversations. We have a few different staff members. Um, and do you like E. Jean or Enda? What should I call you? Jean. Jean, just Jean. Yes, okay. just Jean. <laughs> All right. So we have been conducting interviews with folks who have bookstores here in Texas and the idea okay. is to help promote those bookstores as best we can, especially right now, everyone can okay. use some help. And then also just to get to know uh, folks a little bit more. So okay. I'm going to ask a few easy questions and, um, and then that'll be it. So okay. how did you get into this business? How did you start the bookstore? Okay. Well, um, it was definitely not on my bucket list. I can tell you that. Um, really, um, as an educator, um, I have a prep program here at um, a training school uh, that I started a few years ago. And the prep school is a GED prep program. And we also uh, do college and career readiness programs for teenagers. And um, as part of that, we had a reading room. Um, and then the reading room expanded into a library. So we got more books, more people were asking for different things to read. We also began to participate in some of the local reading programs with the local, lab local libraries. And um, uh, with that, um, I actually went on a trip. I went on a trip with uh, SMU. I was, I'm part of a doctoral program. And we went on a civil rights trip and I went to Square Books, which is a bookstore um, in uh, Southern States. And um, I was impressed by the bookstore. And so when I got back from spring break, I called my sister and said, hey, I want to start a bookstore. And mm -hmm. that was last year, um, spring break. And so she and I got together. And then I began to just put a plan of action together to expand my library into a bookstore. And um, so as we began to gather and collect more books, we, um, I just decided that it would be best for us to be in a front store, a storefront. So um, this year we actually moved into the location we're in now. We did it during uh, oh. coronavirus. <laughs> in the month of April, we started just moving things from where we were to where we are. And we, I will say, officially opened it up as a full-fledged bookstore on a retail level during the first of this year. Wow. So we're brand new. <laughs> what a time. <laughs> yes. Short period of time. <laughs> so. What has been the biggest surprise for you? I mean, I think that um, I love that you were just, you were inspired by another bookstore and came yes. back and said, I'm going to do this. We're going to open yes. a bookstore. Right. Um, what has this job, this experience, what's been the biggest surprise so far? Well, I, I want to say, again, this was not on my bucket list, so I did not have any experience as it relates to a bookstore. Um, I, have my, I have a strong background in education. I've worked in leadership on campuses and administration, so I worked um, closely with librarians. I worked um, in helping to convert libraries from old school look to a more Starbucks look, mm -hmm. and um, and so when I started um, with my bookstore, the one thing that was impressive to me, um, which I really didn't know exist, was the booktubers and bookstagram. So those were two communities that um, I became familiar with, but the Instagram community really embraced my bookstore and um, the popularity of our bookstore. I just have to give a lot of credit to um, the women who um, took on, uh, took the life of this bookstore and took it to places that I never would have gone to and um, so that's been the greatest surprise for me is just the commitment of our of book readers and making sure that I have the type of inventory that you know is customized towards that and my bookstore the theme is it's a bookstore by women about women for women about women and mm -hmm. um, I went towards that theme is because as a student um, in the syllabuses and even oftentimes when I was a part of uh, communities for literature, there wasn't a huge emphasis of books written by women. And as I, I know, we wrote a lot of books and mm -hmm. I didn't really, you know, when you go to a bookstore, you see an collective of a lot of authors, but I wanted to have a bookstore that was 
uh, focused on books written by women. So we do have books written by men because we read books by men. By, by men. Right. So it's a bookstore for women, about women, and by women. So for us, we do read books by everybody. So we do have a collection of books by men. But the most, I would say about 75% of our inventory are books written by women. I love it. And and I love that you mentioned the social media piece of yes. it and sort of finding those books to gram booktubers. Yes. yes. <laughs> and yes. um and and also just when you know the great the, the bookstores that I think we love are the bookstores that bring community together and that mm-hmm. mean that you you incorporate them into your life and they become right. a place that you can go to events or you trust the folks who work there to give you right. good advice for a book to read. What is, where do you see your bookstore fitting into the community around yes. it? And, and what are the sorts of things that you're doing to be a part of that community? Right. Good question. Well, again, I'm an educator by heart. Um, that's uh, my background. My family are educators. My father was an educator. My mother's a community activist. My sisters are educators. So um, my theme or my footprint uh, will be in that direction. We're actually launching um, our third year campaign uh, to connect to um, our young readers and learners, especially with what's going on with the school system um, Mm -hmm. due to COVID-19. So what we're doing is creating shadow programs um, to support school districts and uh, preparing high schoolers for college and career. So uh, last year, the last two years um, through our school and last year with Inclusive of the Bookstore, um, we have uh, friends of Indus Boutique who have been so kind and we list them on our websites to donate books or or funds or resources to help us to increase uh, reading and literature within our community. And so last year we had a camp where people, our young people would come in and they learned how to make concrete, they would read, they learned how to provide CPR. We did a lot of STEM uh, development programs and most importantly, introducing them to books um, that were very fun and that was connecting to who they are and the things that they like. So Mm -hmm. this year we're going to do the same thing um, and we're going to do it via through Zoom as each month we have a thing um, that we're launching after uh, Labor Day for teenagers to connect to literature. Uh, We are going to have them do their vision boards as well. And um, so we're um, excited about the programs that we're going to do. And again, this stand very connected as relates to the footprints of um, preparing our students from an academic perspective. So um, I would say that's always going to be a part of my life. Part of my theme is equipping young people and adult learners as well, because we have a a very good GED program that we do year round. We don't cut off. We take spring break like everybody else does. We take Mm -hmm. Christmas break, but we do it year round. We have open enrollment uh, because so many uh, adults, unfortunately, was not able to complete and get their high school diploma. Mm -hmm. And um, so I am so privileged to be able to work with these wonderful young adults and older adults who are so excited about getting their GED. And many of them have done that through our program. And then they go on and they move up in their career or they go to college um, and, you know, they start their own business. So um, Mm -hmm. the bookstore will remain connected to the community through those types of programs. And if somebody wants to look into participating in the GED program, what's the best way yes. to do that? Yes. So what they can do is if they go to our website and just contact us, mm-hmm. um, what we'll do is we'll bring them to our website for the GED program. And um, we're actually going to put a link to the GED program on that. Um, we, again, we just, the bookstore went so quick, fast, and yeah. up. So um, things are now leveling out. I would say I'm leveling out. It's still up (laughs) fast and quick, (laughs) but I'm grabbing hold to it and now understanding the community. So uh, we've had that GED program going on for now uh, about five years. And that again, that originated with the school and it was a school that gave breath to the bookstore. So now the bookstore is breathing back to the school. So we're going to put a link on uh, the bookstore website so that those who are looking to get their GED program can do so. And a lot of people, they just Google GED um, in Duncanville, Texas, and our school pops up and they see that. And we're also uh, as part of one of the training centers on the official GED website. Cool. Yes. Wow. You're really interesting. 
Thank you. <laughs> I never heard anyone say that. I like that. I love this. I had no idea what I was like. This whole the whole GED, the young people, mm -hmm. the education, and yes. when you were talking about STEM and you were talking yes. about making concrete, it, and then yes. earlier you talked about your work with libraries, and in some ways yes. if you think about you know libraries yes. and how they yes. offer a lot of those things or try to offer as much as they can to the community. So you're exactly. really it's offering a service in addition to being a place yes. to go and buy great books. Yes, we are. And I, and I want to just expand on this. We are actually doing a campaign to, and the, during the school semesters, we work with librarians. So what they do is they send us books that they read and we create a link with their choice of books. So mm -hmm. their own personalized choice, they can even give us the personal list or a list at their schools. And these are high school librarians or college librarians, elementary librarians, that they read books as well. And it's just because oftentimes when we talk about the stress that schools and educators go through, we don't always include the librarians yeah. in those discussions and what they have to do to make the adjustments. Just like now, there's a lot of adjustments that have to be made because school students aren't on the campus right now. So what do they need to do to make those adjustments to make sure that our students have access, right, to the resources that uh, learning resource centers and libraries offer. So you don't hear anything about those type of campaigns and those discussions, but they are very much part of, and even the budget. We don't, we don't need that budget to be cut, so we need to make sure that right. those conversations are very active for our librarians. That's so true. I hadn't really thought about the librarians yes. and yes. how they were being impacted. I think about public libraries. We do a program in public libraries right. across the state, but mm -hmm. but it's so true. If you're a school yes. librarian, how are you really fulfilling your mission right yes. now? It's all kind of changed. Top exactly. Degree, right? Exactly. Exactly. Who are you as a reader? What sort of books do you like to read? If you're grabbing a book and you're just going to read it before you go to bed at night or... Mm -hmm in the tub or wherever you might read books. Um, are you, obviously you're, you, you sound like you love education. You probably yes. read a lot of really important and cool books mm -hmm. on, in that space, but are you yes. secretly a huge mystery fan? Like what's your, <laughs> what are you reading? <laughs> yes. So um, I, I, I love all types of books. Um, and um, so, and that's, that's interesting. I, I, I'm a nerd a lot of a nerd. I love history books. I love to read about history. Um, I love to read about anthropology, uh, those types of books. So that's kind of a nerdy type thing. Um, but I love reading about that. Um, of course, um, anything that is um, African-American literature, I, I love African-American literature. Um, I love to read books about romance. I love reading books on romance. Um, I also like to read books on uh, women who do fixer uppers. So the DIY, what is it? Do it yourself, DIY books. Right. I love reading those books because um, those to me are, they identify, I identify with them as problem solved, right? Uh, in a very creative way. So um, if someone is making shirts, I like to read about how did she do this with this particular shirt? How did she put this together? Not necessarily that I'm going to make shirts, but it's just, I'm inquisitive of how they came up with that idea and how they made it go from a thought process to a real life project. So I love reading about uh, problem solve, especially mo uh, women who are moms that balance life and uh, go through all different tra transitions. I just love to read our stories and our stories are very, very important. And I encourage women, put your stories in a book and I put it in my bookstore because we go through so much and we blog a lot and we journal a lot but we can convert those into stories that some other female um, who's going through some very, something very similar can read it and be very encouraged. So I get encouraged to read books written by women who go through different things in life and problem solve or overcome things or have an aha moment, um, you know, just those types of things. So those are my favorite types of books. I love it. So do you have indie books? indie books in your store, meaning um, writers who are writing their own books and then even publishing them themselves? Can they I do. get into the bookstore? Yeah. Yes. I actually have a table um, and a shelf that's dedicated. So I have a table dedicated to independent authors in the DFW area. Mm -hmm. um, and so they come in and we work on a deal, a consignment agreement. And we do, uh, we're going to go back starting in September to start back our Zoom 
um, where we interview independent authors. And so right now we have on our website authors that we um, interviewed, uh, three of them were from DFW area that are there and they're able to get their books, books purchased. And I know that's very helpful to say, hey, our books mm -hmm. are actually in a bookstore. So absolutely. And then if you, uh, we have independent authors that are not local, but there are independent authors. We have a shelf list um, at our bookstore that's des um, dedicated for them as well. That's awesome. Yes. Is there, is there anything else that you want to say um, and share with whoever might be watching this video about the bookstore, what you want them to think of when they think of, and does Boutique? I love the yes. name. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I came up with, Enda is my first name. Okay. So that's where Enda comes from. And book, of course, it's a bookstore, but you know, we go shopping at a boutique and this is my she shed. So I have a house full of a whole bunch of guys. So when we come in here, it's a she shed. It's, uh, it has the colors, the theme, the energy, the feel good, the comfort. We have big chairs, small chairs. We have pillows, all types of things. And I know we have COVID-19 now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, of course, that, that, that type of um, environment uh, is, is, is you know, challenging. But when women or even men or anyone that comes in, they, they feel like it's very comfortable. And that's what I want is when people come to the bookstore to feel like it's very comfortable. But in order to get a book from in this boutique that we have four different ways of doing it, of course, you're welcome to come. You have to wear your mask. Um, that's important. And we make sure we manage the traffic. So you can physically come to our bookstore. We're open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. We're closed on Wednesdays. Wednesday is my personal off day to reset the button. Um, because I am an educator as well, so I like to be fresh. And then Sundays is my day of Sabbath where I rest and I don't think and I don't do anything but hang out with my family. So that's what I do on Sunday. So we're open yeah. Monday, Tuesday, um, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. You can come in to purchase a book. You can actually go on our website. And if you want to, we do curbside. So you can actually order and pay in advance for your book if you want to do that. You can also purchase it online to be delivered to you as well. So we have a presence where you're able to do that. And if you want to download, we have a, a company that we work with where you can download your books and listen to your books as well uh, as an audio book. So we have four different ways that our uh, customers can be um, served. And if you see, don't see a book, that's on our list. You just let us know and we will customize a link just for that person and email it to you so you can get that book. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was yes. really great. It was great to talk to you. It was great to hear more about the store. Ooh, that's my phone. I'm going to, we'll cut that out. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We're all connected. Thank you. Thank you for your time.